Grass are Gilmore Girls. All right, folks, today I'm going to talk to you about Netflix says the US how ranks to find amazing fishing spots, new fishing spots, and especially ones that don't have any pressure. This is how I've found them over the last 10 years or so. The website is called iTouch Map. It is better than Google Earth because it does not get blurry when you zoom in. Then what you want to do is type in the town. I'm going to type in Poplar Bluff for example. And what you want to do is you can use this method to find ponds out in the middle of nowhere or to find access points on your favorite river. Alright, what you want to do first actually is have it on the regular map like this and you don't want to specifically type an address in but you want to just type in the town where you know the rivers are or you can discover new rivers just by searching around and what you can do right here is zoom in and out you want to zoom out to find more stuff and then as you find it you zoom in on it and it'll eventually show the name of what you're looking at See, eventually I just zoomed in it says Black River okay now what you want to do at that point is hit satellite it'll have two different views and you can zoom all the way in on this with this iTouch map program and it never gets blurry it is really amazing okay that's zoomed in all the way Okay, I take that back. The very last one's a little bit blurry. See, it's clearing up now, though. The, the actual best one is one out from zoomed in all the way. This feature is so amazing. What amazes me about it is I can literally see trees laying in the water. I can see where it's shallow and where it's deep. And what I do is I'll start at the very beginning of a river or the very end of the river, and I'll just sit there and scroll 100 to 200 yards at a time. And what you want to do after this point is grab a notebook and what you can do is plan a day out. And what you do is write down every road that crosses it or every road that comes near it that looks like you can possibly walk to it. You want to write all of them down and how to get there from where you start from your home actually. And then you go, say you, you put write five places down, what you want to do is right directions to the first place and you always want to have more than one because you don't know it could be private land it could it could say no trespassing uh, maybe hard to walk or it could have steep banks or whatnot you always want to have when I go out exploring I put three or four of them down sometimes even five or six that way you can learn a bunch of them in one day and you plan a, a, a trip to where you can hit all these roads in order and kind of come back in a circle to get back home all right now what you want to do in your notebook you want to write directions from your house to the first access point say for instance I'm gonna come right here it's called Sportsman's Park and say I start exploring up river I just keep scrolling like this with a little with the mouse and see for example right here I just discovered a pond if I well I knew it was there but I you you can discover so many things that you didn't know existed this pond is probably it, it doesn't look private there's no houses around it uh, it's probably flood water it looks like it's a little pond and it exits and has a little creek that hits the river and you can tell there's a big hole there on the river itself so you know you can find ponds that you possibly won't get ran off on because they're so far out in the middle of nowhere but back to what I was getting at I'll keep scrolling up right here and you'll eventually find the next access point so what you want to do after that point is write directions from the first place that you went to to get to the second place and so on and so on from the second place to the third place third to the fourth and you want to do them in order you don't want to be going past the second one uh, all the way to the third one you want to do them in order and then uh, you know you, you obviously got to figure out how to get back home one thing you don't one mistake you don't want to do is, is do all this from your phone while you're driving because for one you might get in a, a, a spot so far in the country that you're 
going to be in a dead zone and your phone won't work properly. You want to have all this stuff written down before you leave the house in case that happens because I have been certain places where my phone wouldn't get a signal at all. It depends what phone company you have, yeah sure, but you, you want to be guaranteed. Now, th there is one thing that's kind of tough to do and that's what if you don't hit all five of these places and how do you know how to get back home? Well, that, that's, a, that's something that's hard to figure out. You know, you might go to the first spot and end up staying there. Or you might end up going to the only two out of the five that you wrote down and uh, need to figure out how to get back home there. You know, the more you write down, the better off you are. Uh, my suggestion is write down at least a highway that's near there and how to get to it. And then you can go from there. By then, if you're on a major highway, your phone will work and you can figure it out from there. Also, how this really works well is I'm going to show you guys the, the private pot lake I fish a lot where you see me catch the pickerel and crappie. It's right here. Okay. And it shows you things that you wouldn't know if you were there on foot walking around this. For instance, right here, if you look real closely, you can tell the lake is very shallow on this one side going out about 30 feet from the bank all the way, about three quarters of the way around the lake. This side is only probably four to five foot deep. You can see the dirt down in there. Now, even when you're there, you really don't notice that. You can see, you can tell where the deepest part of the lake is, where you couldn't do that from being there in person. This program is amazing. It allows you to, to determine uh, where brush piles are, where trees are, where the deepest part is. Uh, easier ways to get to even if you fished a river your whole life you're gonna find access points that you didn't know existed that have very little pressure and allow you to discover new places and what I do on like I said I start at the very beginning of a river and I work all the way down it now you don't want to do that with a, a, a 500 mile long river but something that's 40 or 50 miles you can easily find the deepest hole in the river and an access point that doesn't get hit hard at all. Um, I've discovered so many places, it's, it's just hard to imagine. Uh, I wouldn't go fishing at 80% of the places I go today if I wouldn't use this program. That's how good it works for me. Now, I'm going to show you an example. Up here, about four more miles to the north, on the Black River, one of the places I discovered was from here. And what it is, it's an old gravel pit they used to dig out in the 1930s. Uh, they used to dig gravel out of there. And let me zoom in here. You'll notice the river is real narrow on both ends. Very narrow. And very narrow down here and very narrow up there. But right here is an old gravel pit they dug out. This thing is 60 to 100 foot deep from what I'm told. I would have never known it was even there and there is a boat ramp there and everything it is the absolute deepest hole in the river and it's huge it's about 20 acres in size at least maybe even 50. uh it's 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 a really big gravel pit um the biggest walleye in in probably the whole state are in this hole now if you fish this river everywhere else you're not going to get them like you would right there um I have found so many private ponds, swamps, backwater saloons, borrow pits, private ponds, uh, ponds that you can possibly go to. I usually don't try to do that because I don't like dealing with worrying and getting caught doing something I'm not supposed to do. But there is ponds that you can go to uh, that are out in the middle of nowhere and are really not private. It just that that's your own discretion. You do what you want to do, but. Uh, see, I just found another bridge right here. Um, and a lot of them, a road may not go all the way to the river, but you'll find that a road comes really close to the river, like this, and then you will be able to walk through a little tiny patch of woods, or you can walk down a gravel road. There's several gravel roads that come close to uh, rivers that you just don't know about. Here's a conservation area. Here's here's another recreation area. Uh, you know, you need to give this program a try, and you will discover um, amazing places. 
it just takes a lot of time and devotion and I, what I usually do is like the one hour rule I'll look all around one hour from my home and or if you're going out of town and you want to explore a different town that you're going to it works really well for that too I did it for vacation I uh, found several sp spots on the Mississippi River it helps you to find rock dikes where the ring wing dikes are it helps you learn where the dams are um, when I went to the Illinois coal mines that's how I discovered where all the lakes were what their names was and how to get to them and then I did further research to find out what kinds of fish were in them by typing in the name of the lake it showed the stocking schedule what kinds were in there and whatnot all right, that's all I have for you guys. I hope you give it a try. It's called iTouch Map. I hope this was helpful, and it should help somebody out there. You guys have a good day.